ஹலோ ஃப்ரெண்ட்ஸ் யூ ஆர் ஆல் வெல்கம் டு ஹியூமன் பீ வி ஆர் ஸ்டார்டிங் பயோமெக்கானிக்ஸ் கிளாஸஸ் அண்ட் லெட் ஸ்டார்ட் வித் ரிஸ்க் பயோமெக்கானிக்ஸ் டுடே வி ஆர் கோயிங் டு டிஸ்கஸ் அபவுட் ரேடியோ கார்பல் ஜாயிண்ட் ரிஸ்ட் இஸ் ஆல்சோ கால்ட் கார்பஸ் அண்ட் இட் இஸ் த மோஸ்ட் காம்ப்ளெக்ஸ் ஜாயின் இன் த பாடி இட் இஸ் அ பயாக்சியல் ஜாயின் தட் மீன்ஸ் இட் ஹேஸ் காட் டூ டிகிரிஸ் ஆஃப் ஃப்ரீடம் த மோஷன்ஸ் ஆர் ஃப்ளெக்ஷன் அண்ட் எக்ஸ்டென்ஷன் தட் ஒக்கர்ஸ் அரௌண்ட் அ கொரோனல் ஆக்சஸ் Alna deviation and radio deviation that occurs around an andro-posterior axis. Before going to wrist biomechanics, we should know the bonds of the wrist. We have radius and ulna. In between radius and ulna, we have radio-ulna disc. Distal to radius and ulna, we have proximal carpal row. Proximal carpal row include scaffold, lunate, trachyotrum and pisiform distal to proximal carpal row we have distal carpal row it include trapezium trapezoid capitate and hamate distal to distal carpal row we have metacarpals to remember the names of a carpal bond there is a mnemonics that is she looks too pretty try to catch her The wrist consists of two compound joints that is radiocarpal joint and midcarpal joint. About the radiocarpal joint surface, the proximal articular surface is formed by radius and radio ulna disc. You can see that there is an articular disc is placed between radius and ulna. Actually this articular disc is a part of triangular fibrocartilage complex. So the proximal articular surface is formed by radius and radio ulnar disc. The distal articular surface is formed by scaffold, lunate and trachyotrum. About the proximal articular surface, the radius has got a lateral radial facet and a medial radial facet. The lateral radial facet articulate with scaffold, medial radial facet articulate with lunate and triangular fibrocartilage complex articulate predominantly with the trachyotrum but has got some contact with lunate when the wrist is placed in neutral position proximal radiocarpal joint surface tilted volarly and ulnarly that means for the radius the radius side length that means in the lateral side is more than the medial side length that is the ulnar side length so you can see that in the lateral side the radius has got more length compared to the medial side that means the radius is tilted ulnarly and you can also see that the posterior length is more than anterior length that means it tilted volarly or it tilted anteriorly so you can say that the proximal radiocarpal joint surface tilted volarly and ulnarly about the triangular fibrocartilage complex it considered as a fibrocartilaginous continuation of articular cartilage of distal radius and this triangular fibrocartilage complex consists of a disc and its fibrous attachment you can see that there is a disc and there are a lot of fibrous attachment and it is connected medially via two fibrous lamina one is upper lamina and second one is lower lamina the upper lamina include wood dorsal and volar radio ulnar ligament here you can see the dorsal and volar radio ulnar ligament and it attaches to ulnar head and ulnar styloid so the upper lamina include dorsal and volar radio ulnar ligament the lower lamina connected to sheath of extensor carpi ulnaris tendon trachyotrum hamate and base of fifth metacarpal through ulnar collateral ligament here you can see that the lower lamina is connected to extensor carpi ulnaris tendon sheath trachyotrum hamate and base of fifth metacarpal through ulnar collateral ligament in lower lamina there is a irregular connective tissue called meniscus homologue which traverses volarly and ulnarly from dorsal radius to insert on the trachyotrum so here you can see the meniscus homologue which traverses volarly and ulnarly from dorsal radius and attached to the trachyotrum 
and it has got fibers that is inserted to ulnar styloid and form pre-styloid recess. Next we are moving to distal articular surface of radiocarpal joint. The distal articular surface is formed by scaffold, lunate and tracheotrum. These are the bonds of proximal carpal row. These bonds are interconnected by two ligaments. They are scapholuneate ligament and lunotracheotral ligament. You can see that the scaphoid, lunate and tracheotrum is connected by two indrocious ligaments. The carpal row and ligaments act as a single joint surface and it can change shape to accommodate to the demands of forearm and hand. Remember, pisiform is a bond of proximal carpal row and it is not take part in the formation of radiocarpal joint. It acts as an anatomical pulley for flexor carpi ulnaris. The radiocarpal joint considered as an incongruent joint because the overall contact between the proximal and distal radiocarpal surface is only 20%. So it is considered as an incongruent joint. Because of the angulation and incongruence, we already discussed there is a ulnar tilt and a volar tilt. Because of this angulation, the flexion range is more than extension range and ulnar deviation range is more than radial deviation. The function of radiocarpal joint is also affected by the length of ulna in comparison with radius. There are two conditions, ulnar negative variance and ulnar positive variance. In ulnar positive variance, the distal ulna is long in relation to the distal radius. In ulnar negative variance, there will be a short ulna in comparison with the radius at the distal end. Ulnar positive variance cause impingement of triangular fibrocartilage complex between distal ulna and tracheotrum and it is also associated with thinner triangular fibrocartilage complex. The ulnar negative variance may result in abnormal force distribution across radiocarpal joint and that will lead to degeneration at the radiocarpal joint. Avascular necrosis of lunate that is Keenbos disease has been associated with ulnar negative variance. Here we are showing the MRI image of avascular necrosis of lunate that has been associated with ulnar negative variance. Next we are moving to radiocarpal ligaments and capsule. The radiocarpal joint is enclosed by a strong and loose capsule. It is reinforced by capsular and intracapsular ligaments. Most of the ligaments that crosses the radiocarpal joint also contribute stability at the midcarpal joint. And the muscles of radiocarpal joint also function at midcarpal joint. The flexor carpi ulnaris is the only muscle that crosses the radiocarpal joint and it is attached to pisiform that is a bone in the proximal carpal row. The pisiform is loosely connected to the tracheotrum so the force acting on the pisiform by the flexor carpi ulnaris muscle is translated to tracheotrum, hamate and fifth metacarpal via pisiform ligaments so that the movements of radiocarpal and midcarpal joints must be examined together. In the next video, we will discuss midcarpal joint. Thank you.